Hello again, everyone. Glad to hear the sound is working well. Thank you for your messages to let us know about that. Thank you very much also for joining Dragon Trail for the March edition of our monthly webinar series. My name is Sienna. I'm the Communications Manager at Dragon Trail Interactive. And today we'll be presenting an in-depth guide to travel trade shows in China. Before we get started, I'd just like to make a quick announcement about Dragon Trail Interactive's 10-year anniversary summit this May in Beijing, if you haven't heard about the event yet. It's called China, the Future of Travel, and it will take place over two and a half days in Beijing, directly following ITB in Shanghai, and we'll be focusing on how to meet the needs of the new kind of Chinese tourism, um, independent, mobile, digitally savvy, and more experienced travelers. And the summit will include um, talks from Chinese travelers and industry experts, as well as site visits um, and networking and entertainment as well. So it should be a really great event uh, if you're looking to work more with Chinese outbound tourism in the coming years. You can find a preliminary event schedule as well as a preliminary list of speakers and other information about the event um, and apply to attend the event at chinafutureoftravel.com as well as the event section of the Dragon Trail website. And we also will be sharing this presentation as a PDF and a recording of the presentation with everyone in the coming days. So you'll have all of the links and information there as well. Presenting today's webinar is Dragon Trail's Managing Director for Europe, the Middle East, and Africa, Roy Graf. Uh, Roy has been working for over 20 years in the field of Chinese tourism, uh, and especially during the very early days of Chinese outbound tourism. He's worked with clients and Chinese travelers all around the world, and he's also personally attended um, a majority of the exhibitions that he'll be talking about today uh, as an exhibitor or a visitor or a speaker um, or a combination of those things. Um, before we'll get started with the presentation, just say a few words about Dragon Trail Interactive. We work with around uh, 70 travel brands on six continents and also work with many different industry verticals in the travel industry, including tourism boards, hospitality, cruise lines, airlines, attractions, and other businesses. We are a digital marketing and solutions agency, and we focus purely on China, on travel, and on digital, which gives us very specific information into this area. As I mentioned before, um, 2019 is our 10th anniversary year, so the company's been around for a decade now, and we currently have five offices uh, headquartered in Beijing, as well as offices in Shanghai and Xi'an, and international offices in London and in Lexington in the US. For today's agenda, we'll start by introducing the overall travel trade calendar for China and travel trade events there and some of the top events and what you should expect from them. Uh, we'll also have a how-to guide for Chinese travel trade shows. And then we'll talk a bit about some new digital kinds of travel events um, that can be seen as complementary to the traditional offline events. Uh, and go through some of the essential Chinese business etiquette that you need to know if you're attending and doing business at these events. And then we'll as end the webinar with a Q&A session. So actually, if you think of questions, you can ask them at any point during the webinar, but we ask that you please do, those, um, do that using the Q&A button, which you should see on your screen, as opposed to the chat. Um, if you do it through the Q&A, then we're very it makes it easy for us to log the questions and make sure that we see them and can respond to them at the end. Whereas in the chat, it tends to get a bit lost. So please use the Q&A button. And as I mentioned earlier, we will also be sending out the PowerPoint with links to all of these shows uh, to everyone in the coming days, as well as a recording of the webinar. Uh, so don't worry about taking notes on absolutely everything. Um, so at this point, I will turn over to Roy Graf for the webinar. Good morning, everybody. Um, pleasure to be here with you this morning. And uh, we'll just uh, start with talking about some of the, the major events uh, in China. Uh, over the last few years, we've seen a proliferation of travel 
shows, exhibitions, and conferences of all descriptions. And it can be really difficult to know what is the right one to participate in, how many we should uh, do a year, um, which area of China it will cover, etc. So we'll try and highlight some of the more prominent ones. Uh, this is a, not an exhaustive list, but it is a calendar with the uh, uh, um, months uh, where the, and, and where they're being held. Uh, and we'll try and highlight some of them uh, and talk about what they're good for. But it's not an exhaustive list, and there are more um, that are probably more regional or domestic or just for um, Asia and that we we haven't we won't have a chance to cover uh in this um in this talk so uh the oldest one uh that's also officially um run by the um uh, tourism administration is citm china international travel mart uh, it's been going since 1998 the first uh, the year that uh, australia new zealand got the first uh, ads or approved destination status um agreement with china and it has both uh, trade only uh, days and and summer days now it's being alternated between shanghai and kunming uh, it's held in november in, in the beginning of november usually and um it is about three quarters domestic now um it, when it was the only show in town all the tourism boards had to participate there because they were invited personally by the tourism administration of china over the years, with more competition happening, with more, I guess, professional um, events being held uh, around China, uh, less governments, uh, governmental tourism boards are exhibiting there. And uh, their investment in this uh, event has been reduced in favor of either their own roadshows or, or other events. Now, um, the the running of the event itself uh, is, I would say, probably less uh, uh, professional and polished than uh, others. But at the same time, it attracts uh, a lot of the top um, travel agencies in China because they need to be there to show their face uh, since they're invited by the um, uh, tourism administration. And um, it, to have a presence there is still considered politically um, important. Next. COTTM, uh, China Outbound Travel and Tourism Market, is a private um, uh, event. It's run in partnership with the Beijing Tourism Administration, and it's run by a company called um, uh, Tarsus Exhibitions. Now, it's being held uh, in April, so next month in Beijing. It is purely for outbound and purely for trade. So their take is basically uh, invite uh, hosted uh, buyers uh, travel agents uh, and help them basically uh, connect with the exhibitors. Now, because of its location and again the fact that there's other competition uh, in China, it tends to mostly attract uh, agents from North China, so Tianjin, uh, Dalian, Beijing, of course, uh, etc. Now, we um, uh, Dragon Trail uh, exhibit there. Um, our headquarters in Beijing, we, uh, we know the event quite well. If you need help with that event, you can talk to us. But um, uh, I think that uh, uh, for North China, it's a, it's a good event to take part in. And they also have a forum where uh, they talk about China outbound topics um, uh, and discuss the state of the industry. So it's also a good place for education. Next. ITB China uh, will be uh, taking part this time this year for the third time in May. Uh, it's also B2B, uh, three-day conference. It's uh, uh, run by the company that does ITB in Berlin and also ITB Asia in Singapore. They're quite professional in how they run. They attract a high caliber of exhibitors and of buyers. Um, and they also have uh, a, a program of talks and lectures about uh, uh, travel technology, business and leisure travel. And um, again, it would attract mostly people for uh, agents from uh, Eastern China, but uh, uh, the, the brand itself is attracting agents also from other parts of China. Uh, we will also be exhibiting there. You can visit us at stand E46 if you are attending. And uh, as uh, Sierra mentioned before, the week after, so immediately after the weekend, um, we are having our own uh, summit in Beijing, 
and some of the exhibitors and attendees of ITB China are taking the uh, fast train together to Beijing to take part in that. So if that's something that interests you, speak to us later. I think that um, uh, ITB China is a very new event, but uh, it has uh, proven itself to be very well organized and well attended. BITE, Beijing International Travel Expo, uh, started really uh, in 2004 by the Beijing, Beijing Municipal Tourism Board as a holiday um, show. Uh, it does attract a lot of consumers from Beijing area. It's taking place in the summer. Um, it, basically, while there are uh, quite a few destinations there on tourism boards, it's mainly uh, two operators selling packages uh, through the travel agents and um, people can buy directly uh, their, their, their holiday packages there. So uh, it's a, a bit uh, more of a consumer show. Um, if you're looking to spread around and you have uh, more kind of consumer uh, and group tour product, uh, this could be a good place to, um, uh, uh, to basically uh, display it and promote it. Um, but if you're on a wholesale side or, um, or a big destination, it's probably a little bit uh, too regional. Uh, it won't attract people from outside of uh, the Beijing area. Next. Shanghai World Travel Fair um, was started by the Shanghai uh, Tourism Administration in partnership with uh, international exhibition companies. So they do have an international marketing uh, for this. Um, it's focused on uh, holiday destinations, so ADS uh, outbound destinations. And uh, there are a day uh, uh, reserved for trade only, and then there's a holiday show. So in a way, it's kind of parallel to BITA, BITE in Beijing. And um, it tends to mostly attract exhibitors from Southeast Asia, who are also interested in, in, in kind of mass tourism and selling uh, holidays directly to consumers at the show. It's being held in central uh, Shanghai, so quite easy to access and will attract both uh, consumers and, and agents from Shanghai area. Guangzhou International Travel Fair has been held for a long time. It's also one of the earliest shows. Um, the exhibition hall is a little bit outside of the city, but not too far. And uh, a lot of it is domestic travel and Asian travel. But uh, Guangzhou Alban travel market is actually very robust and very strong. Uh, Guangzhou, uh, people have been traveling because it's uh, one of the first provinces to develop on the back of uh, autos manufacturing in, in, um, in Guangdong province. So um, people from Guangdong province are much more travel savvy and experienced um, and have the money to travel. So um, it's kind of worth looking at this market as one of the more developed, mature markets in China and Guangzhou travel fair uh, can help you connect and, and, and uh, connect directly with travel agents from that area, from southern China. Um, but again, it's a very, very regional fair. Uh, travel trade market Chengdu. This is uh, the same company that runs the Shanghai World Travel Fair. It's uh, only been run once before in 2018, so it's a very new event. Um, and it focuses on getting buyers, uh, travel agents from central and western China. And uh, it's a good access to the second and third tier cities um, in central western China. So uh, at the moment, uh, we see that most of the demand tends to be from there to Asia. But uh, there are uh, increasingly direct flights from Chengdu and Chongqing to Europe. Um, and um, there, are, there are pockets of uh, great wealth and uh, industrial development in cities like Xi'an, Wuhan, uh, Chongqing, Kunming, and Chengdu. And uh, it's a market that probably has less competition from international suppliers and destinations than, than other places. And as such, is uh, definitely seen as an up and coming dynamic market to be in. Now, um, on the conferences side, uh, Travel Daily Conference has been held now, I think since uh, 2009, perhaps, and uh, it's grown rapidly from a very focused kind of uh, technology and marketing conference to an uh, industry-wide uh, conference that attracts over a thousand people, uh, attended by most of the who's who in uh, travel technology and online travel, uh, as well as uh, hotels and, and airline distribution. Uh, but also um, 
international companies like Booking.com, TripAdvisor, Hotel Beds, etc. It's uh, added since last year a digital travel show, so an expo area that is focused on things like uh, travel technology, distribution, um, CRM systems, etc. And that the exhibition part is also growing uh, now. Now it's all held um, in Chinese, but they do provide for the, the conference part um, simultaneous interpretation. And uh, if you're looking to network and understand more about the travel industry, it's probably a good place to, to do that. Um, ILTM China, International Luxury Travel Market, uh, is run by Reed Exhibitions, the company that also does uh, ILTM in Cannes and uh, WTM around the world. It used to be called ILTM Asia, held in Shanghai. Um, and last year they changed it. So now there's an exclusive event for luxury travel focused on China held in uh, October. And ILTM Asia was moved to Singapore. Now it targets suppliers of luxury travel products, destinations that want to attract luxury uh, high-end uh, customers from China. And it has pre-scheduled appointments. So it's, it's, I think, the only one in China that has strictly only pre-scheduled appointments. You get guaranteed meetings with uh, around uh, 10 to 15, uh, or actually up to 20 uh, appointments per day over three days. And they also have on the first day uh, a conference, a luxury travel conference, that talked about issues relating to luxury in China. Um, I would say that while this one is quite expensive and because it's a very new event, the China only. Uh, event at the moment is quite small, um, but they do a lot of their own research to find the luxury agents. And some of them, of course, are kind of big mice and corporate uh, travel agents. Others are niche players and um, travel consultants that maybe only have a few hundred clients, but they're all kind of very wealthy clients. Um, it's a good place to, again, have this kind of the, the, uh, the setting for quiet one-to-one one -one meetings, but it's very important to be prepared to have Chinese speaking interpreters or staff with you uh, to make sure you get the most of it um, and uh, do some uh, due diligence and research on the on the um, agents that you choose to meet because there's a combination of on the appointment setting system where you can request meeting with agents but they have to accept it and if the agents want to meet with you you have to accept that uh, the agents are all hosted so the, the, the part of your, the cost of this uh, event is to pay for agents from all over China to fly and be hosted in Shanghai for this event. A few new events that uh, um, are starting off um, that we um, see in China. Uh, one is called UTE, Universal Tourism Exhibition. These are smaller uh, events that basically it's kind of like a roadshow. So Across, uh, along to 2019, you have uh, 22 events in lots of different cities in China where uh, they bring international uh, exhibitors from overseas. Um, and basically, uh, the, the, the exhibitors themselves are, um, are basically uh, uh, suppliers that are uh, looking to uh, have kind of one-to-one -one, uh, B2B meetings. So the agents are invited as visitors and they're all locally uh, sourced. Um, it's still too early to tell how successful and effective these events are because it's quite new, but uh, they're definitely going to be cheaper um, uh, than the, the major events we talked about before. Um, another one which is quite similar is the China Outbound Travel Exchange Market. And uh, they're also held across China in uh, lots of different cities. I think that, uh, as you can see from the pictures, the setting is generally a hotel ballroom. Uh, it's quite uh, energetic and, um, and fast-paced. And again, it's a chance to meet one-to-one -one with lots of different agents. And to make the most of these events, it's really important that uh, you are able to follow up with them and also identify in every city agents that you want to meet face-to-face uh, -face in, in their office and have additional meetings because you won't have time to really uh, discuss proper business in these events. It's all about kind of getting to know each other and like so showing some of what you have to offer. Um, but uh, it's important to do some research to know who are the agents that you want to really establish relationships with. 
On the uh, corporate side, uh, MICE uh, events, there are two that are, um, I guess, prominent uh, in Shanghai and Beijing. The ITNCM is in Shanghai. Um, it is um, organized by TTG Asia Media Company, and it's focused on uh, inbound, outbound, and domestic with a lot of uh, stress on corporate travel, um, meetings, and incentives. A lot of the exhibitors there are either uh, hotel chains and airlines and destinations of um, products and services for corporate travel and uh, for meetings. And the visitors are mostly, are both Chinese uh, travel agencies as well as uh, buyers from large corporations. The equivalent in Beijing is IBTM. IBTM is a brand that also has uh, um, shows in Europe and it's run by Reed exhibitions. Um, it's a B2B event, so again, it's very similar to ITNCM, uh, attended by corporate buyers and visitors from, um, corp from basically uh, either business agencies um, and companies. Uh, and there, are also, there is also a forum with talks about uh, business travel. So uh, moving on from the uh, kind of overview of the events, uh, we'll talk a little bit about how to prepare for uh, Chinese trade shows and, and basically what's the best, case, the best kind of uh, uh, business practices for successfully attending uh, exhibitions in China. Before the show, it's really important that uh, you really uh, strategically look at the timing and uh, what these uh, events are going to um, uh, deliver to you. The timing is important because there are high seasons and, 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 uh, and, and holiday periods and you want to really hit the agents uh, at the time when they're preparing to develop, develop product and market it to their customers. So consider that uh, you know, events are happening before, for example, the summer holidays or before the national golden week holidays. And uh, register uh, enough in advance so you can basically review the content, review the, the, the buyers, um, and, uh, and look at uh, um, whether you can contact them in advance and have some uh, meetings prepared on the sidelines of the event itself with the, the, more, the higher potentials. Create localized versions of your content. Uh, it can be a website. It can be brochures on a, you know, it can be on a USB stick. It can be a website where, um, with downloadable PDFs, um, making sure that you have, you use QR codes. We'll talk about it in a second, um, to allow the agents to, uh, scan and download your content. Um, also sign up, uh, to a WeChat account. You can sign up to a personal WeChat account, which is free, uh, download the app. Uh, uh, it's available also on the, on the international app stores. And, you, and then uh, update your profile on WeChat, so then when you share information, they can immediately be able to get all the information from you via WeChat. It's probably now more important than even having a business uh, card, but um, there is still a strong culture of exchanging business cards in China. So when you're using a business card, tend to, uh, you know, make, you can print the QR code for your WeChat account on the business card. Um, and, and that will basically cover both of these things. Now, depending on where you're going to, uh, North China, East China, West China, um, um, Western China, or South China, study the geography there, study the, the major cities and markets. Uh, what are the market segments that are active there? What are the interests and kind of difference in culture? It's really important that you also show that understanding and when you discuss, you establish personal relationships with, uh, with the agencies. Now, uh, some agencies have uh, very well known on them, uh, for them, like, uh, CITS, CYTS, China Comfort, uh, et cetera. Now, the name of the agency doesn't always mean that the service is, that, that their product or their um, um, power, their purchasing power is gonna be very strong necessarily. Um, many of them are franchises or are uh, borrowing the license of a brand name to run their own private business. So it, you need to kind of do some uh, due diligence on exactly who they are, what's their background. Um, it's more important that the individual uh, agent, uh, if they are from a, a large company and they're, say, the product manager, then that's fine. But some of them, if they're the owner of an agency, it's really important to know their background. So did they work in other companies before? Did they move around? 
um, what's the reputation in the market and what's their experience and knowledge of selling your destination or product. Um, WeChat is really good to, you know, as a way to uh, keep in touch. Uh, ideally, you met them, you shared, their, you kind of shared WeChat um, information and then followed up with that. So you can send through WeChat your uh, website link, your PDF, images, video, etc. But you can also obviously build the personal relationship with them. So um, can't stress that enough. Now, when you're at the show, uh, there will be some agents, the ones that are more experienced in selling Western destinations that, would, that can speak English. The level of English will vary a lot. So don't count on uh, being able to communicate with everybody in English. Uh, sometimes you'd have an amazing time doing that, but uh, it's always important to have an interpreter. And when you have an interpreter who is uh, Chinese speaking, that they have experience in the travel industry, uh, know how to talk about um, your product, and then either they have been to the country or you train them beforehand to uh, talk about it from their perspective. Because just plainly uh, interpreting back and forth without knowing anything about it, um, it kind of becomes obvious. Now, uh, some of people may not necessarily be relevant to you, and it's really good to ask some questions about their, their experience and understanding of, the, of your product and destination and whether they've sold it before. And if you see that that's not the case, you may not be ne uh, needed to have a very long meeting. Um, any high potential clients that uh, you really feel there is a opportunity for more business, um, try to schedule additional time with them, lunch, um, dinner, uh, or meeting in their office. It's also good to go to their office to see what their company is really about. And then you can, um, either have your QR codes on the table in a way that's kind of basically can be scanned even by people who maybe you don't have an appointment with, but just show an interest or on a pull-out poster, for example. Um, and that could be a, a, a QR code that will connect them to the WeChat or to your website um, or to um, training materials, etc. And then after the show, um, obviously people, uh, the agents are also going to be coming back to their office with lots of information about different destinations and suppliers. So give it a few, a few days, but then follow up with uh, the new contacts. When you if, you, if you can schedule some time after the event to, um, to stay in China, then you can also uh, schedule impromptu uh, meetings uh, at the event to go and see them afterwards and uh, use the WeChat to follow up with them. Now, uh, in the cases where you see agents that are really promising and maybe are not so familiar with the destination or product, then look at how you can invite them to a FAM tour uh, quite quickly after, after the meeting. Um, when you organize FAM tours, and that may be a separate uh, webinar, we talk about that, um, it's important to group together uh, people only from China, not mix them with other nationalities. Uh, and where possible, depending on obviously the numbers, uh, if they are all from the same region of China, it's even better. Um, so complementary and aside from the physical events, uh, to keep in contact with people throughout the year, with, to, to maintain uh, the level of knowledge to the agents to really help them sell your product, it's important to uh, do more than that. And also because, again, if you're choosing one event in China, then it's likely that you will miss out on the rest of the market because it's so big and fragmented. Uh, at Dragon Trail, we, we understand that. We've been working with the travel industry for 10 years now exclusively. We've developed our own database of 35,000 registered travel agents across China that basically use our platforms for destination training, uh, live webinars. One of the products that uh, can complement what you do um, in different ways when you're attending an event is CTA Live, uh, China Travel Academy Live, which is like a roadshow online uh, using WeChat. The agents log in from WeChat and, 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 and basically um, can watch a live presentation with Q&A, which gets recorded. So uh, you can, people can then play it back and you have uh, full information about who attended it with their contact details and, and company information. You can do this, for example, before you go to an event. So you announce that you will attend an event. You invite the agents to come to the CTA Live webinar. And then you, you can see from there who is really interested in, in, in what you have to offer and schedule the meetings with them. Uh, or uh, conversely, 
if you can do this after the event uh, as well, when you see which were the agents that really show an interest and then invite them to learn more about the product and go more in depth. Um, doing these webinars on a regular basis with uh, new information, uh, up-to-date data about uh, what, and then kind of new products and services can be really, really effective. Uh, and a product we're launching this year is called TNTM, the next travel market. That is a complement to an, an actual event uh, where it's an entirely online trade show. It connects international travel brands and exhibitors and suppliers uh, from all over the world to 34,000 travel agents. Uh, if you attend there, you have a booth basically, and you get uh, guaranteed 250 hosted buyers and you get guaranteed appointments that can be scheduled on a one-to-one -one basis as well as you can run webinars for groups of agents. Um, when, when the agents uh, uh, attend, uh, kind of visit your booth, your online booth, they will get all the information, videos, images, and PDFs, uh, and can leave um, uh, feedback and leave, uh, leave a note to you so you can schedule a meeting with them. It's a very cost-effective way. Uh, it's always on, so it's on whenever the agents want to go there. Um, and even if you are abroad in different time zones, you can basically schedule it according to your time. Uh, so some of the features include visitors that can check into your exhibition space. They can leave their WeChat business card, so you can then follow up with them uh, or meet in an online chat room. You get data reporting uh, on all the visitors who check in and for all the interactions with you. There are guaranteed pre-scheduled meetings, um, and you can also basically run uh, live presentations to uh, groups of agents. And these are uh, here some of the top uh, wholesalers there's travel agencies that have already confirmed they will uh, be attending and sending agents to join the uh, online travel market. Now, uh, finally, a, little, a few tips about business etiquette, which uh, if you're going to be meeting with agents, uh, going to dinner or lunch with them, um, having social interaction with them will probably be helpful. So we can go through some of them. Uh, when you're doing introductions, you can you know, learn a few Chinese words like ni hao, um, and things like that. Uh, again, this is not Japan. People don't bow in China. You can shake hands with men, with women. It's less um, less popular for men and women to shake hands. But it, I mean, but uh, you you know, if they reach out their hand to shake, then that's fine. But maybe don't uh, um, offer that up. Um, and same thing if you're a woman. You know, don't like necessarily offer to shake a man's hand. But if uh, if they're up for it and offer that, then that's fine. Um, business cards and, and giving the business cards, uh, holding them in two hands, uh, receiving the card in two hands is also really important. And uh, if you want to really make sure that the Chinese um, remember your name, then translate it into Chinese. Consult a Chinese speaker to help you translate the names both of your company and your own personal name. It's always good to negotiate and discuss uh, business face-to-face, -face, uh, arriving to the meetings on time, bearing in mind that in the big cities in China, traffic is really, really slow, especially in Beijing, but also other big cities. So take enough time and don't schedule the uh, outside meetings too close together. Uh, if possible, you can maybe ask for agents to, obviously, if you, have, if you don't have much time, to come meet you at the hotel, but it's kind of important to see their office, uh, look at what they're doing, look at how many staff they ha have, how busy they are. That's going to be very helpful for you. Uh, meeting over food is always good for socializing and people in China eat quite early. So lunch would start at 12, uh, dinner would start at 6, 6.30. Um, negotiations are quite tough. Don't expect to come out of the first meeting with a, with a contract. And also remember that contract is just the beginning of the negotiation. Having a contract or an agreement doesn't mean that you can really rely on that. You need to have an ongoing uh, kind of relationship that develops and, um, and just develop trust through working together. Um, it is uh, the case that depending on what you're offering, it's very important to be flexible, reliable, and offer good service and uh, offer value. So what people are looking for, not necessarily the cheapest price, in some cases not, that may be true, but oftentimes, uh, it's about knowing that, that they're getting value for uh, the price they're paying. 
Um, if you're a new supplier um, uh, on, the, on, the, on the kind of private side and uh, agents are, are going to test you, um, it's likely that you will get a lot of requests last minute or things that are very difficult and they couldn't get with their existing supplier. Now that's understandable because if they're already working with somebody, they want to know that you are better or going to give them better service, uh, better quality. So it could be that it will be last minute. And if they, even if you uh, say don't win the business, it's good to bid for it and show them that you have a good offer and that you are responsive uh, because that will build trust uh, for future business. Uh, as I mentioned, the contract, even if you sign it in China, it won't be legally binding because it'll be really hard to enforce. Uh, it's more of a gu guideline and, a, and an idea of how to work together. Personal relationships are very important. Uh, when it comes to paying for group tours, people, the agents usually ask for some money to be kept behind for uh, complaints and, and compensation later on. Um, if, if you're, if agents are asking for credit, uh, obviously that's up to you how you handle that, but, uh, it's important to get some references on whether they're good payers or not. Um, and it's also, if you're having group business or kind of looking at uh, multiple groups and, 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 uh, and customers, then offering some incentives, uh, can also help. It's possible that uh, uh, if you're starting business with somebody that they will give you gifts. Um, it's also good to bring some small gifts that represent your local culture, um, souvenirs from your country. And um, remember that at meals and banquets, so if you're being invited uh, in China, whenever your plate is empty, they'll, they'll get, it'll get filled up by somebody. Whenever your, your uh, glass of wine is empty, it will be filled up. If you, don't, if you wanna stop drinking, um, leave your glass full. And um, if you want to, I mean, if you go to restaurants in China, people, they will still, you know, they can, most restaurants will have uh, knives and forks for Westerners, but it's quite a good uh, idea to practice your chopstick skills before you go so you can handle yourself. Um, when it comes to things like pricing as well, uh, it, some Chinese are still uh, superstitious about things like numbers. Number four is uh, perceived as unlucky because it sounds like death in China. Number eight is perceived as lucky. Um, it, it's not a bad idea to avoid when you're pricing things to avoid using the number four in, in prices and to use the number eight in it. So like, for example, a package product can be sold for, um, uh, you know, 3,888 rather than 4,000, for example, uh, and things like that. Um, now, uh, this is the end of this webinar. We do have uh, another one coming up next month on the 24th of April, which will be on the uh, digital advertising and media buy in, uh, in China. But I'll just uh, now um, take some questions. Oh, thanks. Uh, I just like to jump in here about the next webinar too, um, as we'll be launching a poll in the next couple of minutes. And as you know, we launch a, a poll at the end of every webinar, trying to get ideas about what topics you're most interested in seeing for future webinar topics. And digital advertising has been something that's been very popularly demanded. Uh, so we will be focusing on that to give you an idea of how advertising should look, work and cost on platforms like Baidu or travel websites and social media channels as well. So that webinar is already available on our website under the event section and at the link below. So you can register for that now and as usual we'll be doing it at two different times to suit different time zones and schedules. While we answer the questions also uh, Sienna can already um, put up the um, uh, feedback form for uh, just to get some feedback on this webinar and on topics you want to look for future that you can answer in your own time. I see the first question um, is about uh, which is the best travel show to target China outbound travelers. So as I said before, there are a number that are focusing on outbound, including ITB China, COTTM, uh, Shanghai, WTF. Um, and it, I think that if you're, if you're of limited budget, you'd want to focus on one, you'll need to look at uh, studying the market and which market in China is uh, the most relevant for you at the beginning. Uh, is it Shanghai or is it uh, North China, for example, and then choose the event in that, in that, um, 
in that region. So it, I can't really uh, provide just one answer for that. But definitely COTTM, ITB China um, would be the most relevant on outbound uh, trade only and um, ILTM for luxury. The next question from Gemma is, uh, webinar is becoming popular in China. I'd like to know what are the profile of the agents attending webinars? So uh, again, we have over 34,000 travel agents that both sell groups and FIT. The profile of the agents attending the webinar will be based on, uh, will depend on what you're offering. So when you're, you, have, you run a webinar, you would, we would basically send an invitation out to all the agents describing what the topic is, the destination or the product. Uh, and a little bit about what they can uh, um, uh, get in the presentation. And then they will sign up for it. We will see who are the sign-ups and we can give you profiles and information about the ones that have signed up. Um, so that basically will determine who, who they are. But there's definitely agents that fit any description and sell a range of different destinations. If you're selling something in South America, for example, it's likely that the agents signing up to it will be interested in selling that. Um, the webinars uh, have an opportunity for agents to ask questions directly um, and also you can keep that recording on your WeChat account or on your website so they can then listen to others can listen to it again later. Uh, another question from Cornelia is how much time in advance should you meet the Chinese travel partners for targeting the production phase? Well if we're talking about packages and group tours um, generally they will um, want to launch them in the beginning of the year, uh, depending on the destination. Some of them are being sold for Chinese New Year. Some of them are going to be like summer destinations. So it kind of depends on what you're doing. I mean, it's not really the case that people produce uh, big printed brochures for the whole year. So this is, all goes online and actually sent as packages to customers via WeChat. Um, whenever you're going in China, you can still discuss products for, um, for later down the line, but you should assume about six months uh, time of the promotion agreements on pricing and things like that.